He continued to clap Paul's cheeks for a further 20 minutes until he busted a massive load of cream pie inside of Paul. A London forex trader called Paul was jailed for 10 years. He was a skinny 5 foot 9 guy who stole millions from his clients, his own family and also his friends. Paul ran a forex Ponzi scheme which conned people into thinking he was actually a real forex trader but in reality he was just a fraudster. He took investors' money and told them he would trade their money in the financial markets to make more money in exchange for 15% of the profits. He also told them he would get them a nice return of 70% or more every year but instead of investing their money Paul spent the money on expensive shopping sprees in Mayfair and Knightsbridge buying all the latest designer clothes. He also loved to travel around the world going on expensive holidays and would only travel by private jet. Paul also spent loads of money on supercars and fancy luxury restaurants in Mayfair. Paul even stole money from his own mother. He got his own mother to invest half a million into the scheme only for her to lose everything. Paul's parents worked for over 50 years before they retired but shortly after their retirement Paul's father passed. The last thing his mother thought was her own son would rip her off. All the money his parents worked for was meant to be for their retirement but since Paul's father passed his mother had to manage the money all on her own. His mother was not the best at managing money because she had always just been a housewife and his dad looked after everything because Paul's parents were very traditional people. His dad took care of the finances in the family and his mother cooked and cleaned and they were happily married. When Paul's father passed his mother lost the leader of the family since Paul's father was the logical parent. Paul's father would never have given Paul any money because he always saw through Paul. He always saw Paul for who he really was and not who Paul wanted people to believe he was. The last person Paul's mother thought would scam her would be her own son. In court the judge asked Paul how could he steal money from his own mother and he replied saying he was going to inherit all of his mother's money after his mother had passed anyway so he believed he might as well just spend all the money now because he thought he was entitled to it. Paul told the judge his mother had too much money in her bank account and she wasn't doing anything with it so it was better that he just spent all the money right now because in life you only live once so it's best to spend everything you have on experiences and create memories that will last a lifetime. Paul's mother came to court and was mortified by what she heard. She heard everything. She was in tears after hearing this from her own son. Paul left his own mother with nothing and in court showed no remorse for his actions. During Paul's first couple of weeks in prison he spent most of the time in his cell after a big black guy tried to bust his cheeks in the showers but luckily Paul managed to narrowly escape without getting his cheeks clapped out. A week later another inmate on the wing hit him over the head with a pool stick after watching the news. The inmate couldn't believe Paul scammed his own mother out of half a million so he wanted to teach Paul a lesson. To avoid more problems Paul decided to lay low and just keep away from the other inmates. Before going to prison Paul always heard stories about white boys getting turned out when they went to prison.
After Paul narrowly escaped getting his cheeks busted by a big black guy on his wing he didn't want that type of encounter to happen again so he pretty much just kept himself to himself and didn't interact with other inmates at all. The next day a white prison officer who was six foot tall came to Paul's cell to tell him that he was taking him off the wing to get a compulsory medical checkup. Paul told the guard he already did the checkup last week and he doesn't want to do it again so this was a mistake. The guard told Paul this was no mistake and Paul had to do the medical. The prison officer advised Paul he already checked with the medical team who clarified Paul didn't do the medical last week. Paul asked the guard how, could you have checked this with the medical unit so quickly when I only just told you right now that I already did the medical last week. The prison officer started to get angry because Paul wasn't following his orders so he responded saying you either come with me now or I'll drag you to the medical unit myself. Paul looked at the officer's angry face and didn't seem like he had much of a choice so Paul just put on his clothes and went with the officer to do the medical again so he could just get it over and done with. Once Paul was ready the guard handcuffed him and they set off on their journey. All prisoners that leave the wing needed to be handcuffed so this was just standard procedure. While on their journey to the medical center Paul thought it was really odd that he was the only one on his wing going to do the medical but once he got off the wing and started walking through the prison grounds with the officer he felt the nice breeze on his face while looking at the trees and really liked it. Seeing the trees made Paul remember the outside world and how his life was before. He really missed the private jet flights and expensive shopping sprees in Mayfair and Knightsbridge. While walking through the prison grounds with the officer Paul noticed the route they were taking was different to the one he took last week so he asked the officer is this really the right way to the medical center because I didn't take this route when I went last week. The officer said to Paul we are on our way to collect another inmate from another wing to also take him to do his medical as well. The wing they were going to was the oldest part of the prison which was no longer in use. The prisoners gave it a nickname. They all called it Old Block. Paul heard other prisoners talking about this block when he used to eavesdrop on conversations. Apparently this entire block has been decommissioned and all the inmates that used to be on that block have either been moved to other blocks or moved to other prisons. Feeling concerned Paul asked the guard if anyone was actually still living on this block and the guard replied saying they had one or two inmates still housed on an old block. Paul was even more confused because why would there only be one or two inmates on an entire block that should hold a couple of hundred inmates. Once they got to old block it was like a ghost town. The entire block was empty so Paul asked the officer if he was sure there was actually anyone here because the entire block seemed empty and had a real eerie feeling to it. The officer ignored Paul and carried on walking until he got to the cell he wanted and then shouted here we are, we are here and that's when the officer opened the cell. Paul was now even more confused because there was no one in the cell. The cell was completely empty, not even a TV was in the cell. The officer then told Paul to get in the cell. Paul said what's going on and started to take steps back. He then started to make steps to run but before Paul could run the officer kicked the bottom of his feet and tripped him over. Paul screamed as he fell to the ground face first which knocked him out. 
When the officer initially handcuffed Paul he did so with Paul's hands behind his back so Paul could not stop his fall when he fell. Once Paul regained consciousness he noticed he was now in the cell on an old block with nothing on. He was laying on the bed on his belly with his knees and feet on the floor. He looked to the right of the cell and saw the prison officer sitting on a chair in the corner looking straight at him with an angry look on his face. He also noticed the officer also had nothing on. He asked the officer what's going on. The officer replied saying I'm glad you woke up because I was getting worried. You were knocked out for over an hour. Paul asked what's going on because we are supposed to be going to the medical center and that's when the officer started laughing. He then said you were right all along Paul. I already knew you did your medical checkup last week. I just needed a good excuse to get you off the wing. I wanted to bring you to a place where no one could hear you scream. Paul started to get worried because they were both in the cell with nothing on and Paul could see the officer's tings right in front of him and he was hard. The officer then told Paul don't worry I didn't bust your cheeks when you were knocked out. Paul had a sigh of relief and that's when the officer said to Paul, what I'm going to do to you I want you to be awake so you can feel everything. Paul started to panic and shouted help. Please someone help me. The officer started laughing and then said to Paul no one can hear you. Let me help you so the officer shouted help. Someone help us. You see Paul you little weasel no one can hear you and nobody can help you as it's just me and you here. Paul then said to the officer why did you bring me here? Why are you doing this to me because I haven't done anything to you? The officer replied saying you have in fact done something to me. You have indeed hurt me in the worst way possible. The officer then got off the chair and walked to the pile of clothes on the floor as he picked up a picture. He put his and Paul's clothes together and then he sat back down on his chair. In his hand he had a picture. He then asked Paul do you remember this lady? Paul looked at the picture with a nervous look on his face but said no I've never seen this woman in my life. The officer replied saying that's my mother and I know you know who she is because you scammed her for 200,000. That was her life savings and it was all the money she had. After you scammed her out of all her money my mother became depressed and turned to drink. She became an alcoholic. She became a drunk. Before this my mother lived a clean life. She hadn't drunk a day in her life before losing her life savings. She was so stressed out after losing all that money all thanks to you Paul and this is how you hurt me. You hurt my mother. You scammed an 80 year old pensioner and since something happened to my mother something will happen to you. You have no morals. You even scammed your own mother. Paul started crying while begging the officer to just please let him go and he won't mention what's happened today to anyone. He begged the officer to just please let him go and they will both forget this incident ever happened. Paul said to the officer we can shake hands and you can just drop me back to my cell and I won't tell anyone about this I promise. Paul told the officer he is getting his punishment by being in prison. This is more than enough punishment but the officer told Paul that prison alone is not enough punishment. You also need to be punished in other ways while you are serving your time to actually learn your lesson. In the officer's other hand he had Paul's bank card. He got it from Paul's property when Paul first came into the prison. The officer then told Paul if you want to do the right thing pay back all the money you stole. Pay it all back today.
just give my mother her money back and also give the money back to all the other people you stole money from. That is my deal. Just give the money back and all will be forgiven. Paul then told the officer he was broke and had nothing left. The officer didn't believe him and took out his phone and dialed Paul's bank to check his account balance. The officer asked for Paul's password on his account and that's when Paul said to the officer I don't have any money in my bank account I'm broke and I'm also not logging into my bank account to check anything so do your worst and I'm glad I stole your mother's money. The old bag was stupid enough to give it to me so she deserves to lose it all. The officer started laughing and said I thought, you would say something like that and that's when he got up off the chair and started walking towards Paul but as the officer was walking over to him, Paul could see the officer's tings which was hard as a rock. Paul shouted get away from me as the officer walked closer and closer until the officer got behind Paul putting his knees on the floor and grabbing Paul by the sides of his waist. Paul started shouting saying what are you doing? Get away from me, leave me alone. In a last second attempt Paul shouted please ok officer ok please I will log into my bank account so you can check my bank balance. The officer laughed and said it's too late woman and that's when the officer slammed his tings inside of Paul. Paul screamed for his life. The one thing Paul was dreading before coming to prison was now happening. Paul always dreaded being turned out in prison. The officer started to clap Paul's cheeks. Paul was still handcuffed in a cell block with no one around to help him so he had no way to escape. The officer started to laugh as he continued to clap Paul's cheeks. He continued to clap Paul's cheeks for a further 20 minutes until he busted a massive load of cream pie inside of Paul. He then pulled his tings out of Paul and walked over to the chair and sat back down on his seat with a massive smile on his face. The officer was sweating like he just ran two marathons and said to Paul baby that was sweet, you are my new girlfriend. Let me get my breath back and we will go for round two in a minute. Paul had never felt pain like this before in his life. He was very sore from the pounding the officer gave him. He was crying with sticky cream pie dripping out of him saying please officer no. Don't do it again. Please just leave me alone. Paul was confused because prison officers were not meant to be clapping inmates' cheeks. He thought to himself how has this happened. Paul was traumatized by what he just experienced so as the officer got off his chair to walk over to him for round two Paul said please don't do it again I'm still sore I'm still in pain so the officer stopped and picked up his phone and said are you ready to take this call now with a big fat smile on his face. That's when Paul said yes I am ready to take the call just please don't clap my cheeks again. After Paul was sentenced to 10 years in prison the judge went easy on him and he was only ordered to pay back a small portion of the money back to the victims as compensation. The judge also told Paul if he pays all the money back to the victims he will knock 5 years off his sentence. While the judge was saying this Paul began to smile. The prison officer knew Paul was a weasel and wasn't going to pay back anything. He knew Paul would just do his full prison sentence just so he could keep the money so the officer came up with his own plan to get his mum's money back. Once the prison officer called Paul's bank Paul told him his password and that's when the prison guard was shocked because Paul had 10 million in his account. The officer said to Paul, 
You are going to give back all of my mother's money as well as your own mother's money. I also have a list of other people that you stole money from and you will also pay all of them back too. We are going to call everyone otherwise we are going to go for round 2 and then round 3 will be with my broomstick on the floor. Paul looked at the broomstick and didn't want that going inside of him because something like that will rearrange his entire insides so he agreed to just give back the money to the list of victims the prison officer had. The officer didn't have a list of all the victims but at least he could help some of the victims who had been scammed by Paul. The first person on the list was the officer's mother which he got Paul to send back 200,000 via telephone banking. The officer then called Paul's mother and pretended to be her account manager from her bank. He told Paul's mother he managed to find the stolen money and if she gives him her sort code and account number he would be able to transfer all of her money back into her bank account. Paul's mum was now excited but still being gullible and believing someone from her bank actually called she gladly gave the prison officer her bank details which Paul then transferred all of her money back into her account account. She checked on her phone and saw the transfer successfully went through which made her over the moon with joy. Paul was on the bed crying and wanted to speak to his mother to say sorry for what he had done to her and that's when the officer wished her a great day and hung up the phone. The officer then said to Paul your mum is a good woman and didn't deserve to be robbed by her own son so you don't deserve to speak to her. I think the only reason why you want to speak to her is to get in her good books just so you can scam her again and that's never going to happen. After calling all the victims on the officer's list they managed to transfer millions back to everyone on the list who had been scammed. Paul's bank balance was now minus 2000 which is even below zero. The officer got up and sat back on the chair. Paul said to the officer are you happy now? All my money is gone. I needed that money when I get out of prison. I can't get a 9 to 5 job and work like a modern day slave. I'm not a peasant. Please just take me back to my cell. The officer laughed and said your cell. This is your cell. This is your new cell. You will be housed here for the next year. We need you to be somewhere where you have zero access to anything or anyone. This way you can't call your bank to say there was fraud on your account just to try and get the money back. Paul got angry and then started to shout at the officer telling him I'm going to report you. I'm going to tell the warden everything about what happened today. I'm going to tell the warden about everything you did to me today. The warden will fire you and you will be arrested by the police and then thrown into prison for what you have done to me. You are a nasty man. You turned me out. My life will never be the same again. The officer laughed even louder than before and said the warden. The warden. It was the warden's plan to do this in the first place as he laughed. The officer advised Paul that every officer in the prison already knew what I was going to do to you today and they all loved the idea. One of the prison officers even gave me a high five on my way to collect you. Paul was shocked and upset to find out he would never get his money back again so he just closed his eyes and rested his head on the bed in defeat and that's when the officer said are you feeling tired already woman because round one felt really good.
He told Paul you are the first person I turned out and I really enjoyed it so we are going to go for round two now and that's when the officer got Paul's legs off the floor and put him on the bed on his back and put Paul's legs in the air so his knees were close to his head. The officer then said he didn't think he would enjoy turning out Paul because he has never done anything like that before but since it felt so so good he wanted to go again for round two but this time he really wanted Paul to feel him even more and that's when he slammed his tings back inside of Paul and took Paul to pound town. The officer had Paul laying on the bed on his back with his legs in the air screaming for the officer to stop but the officer never stopped. He continued pounding Paul until... The officer started to feel the special sensation in his tings and that's when he busted warm cream pie inside of Paul. Paul didn't know what to do because it was the first time in his life when he felt helpless. With no money and his cheeks being blown out twice he was a broken man. When Paul thought it was all over the officer shouted are you ready for round three with a massive smile on his face. Paul continued to beg the officer not to do it again and that's when the officer said I'm not going again. Two times in one day is enough for me. I can't go again but my broomstick can and that's when the officer picked up the broomstick and rammed it inside of Paul. Paul screamed for his life and was in real pain as the broomstick went in and out in and out. The officer was laughing with the biggest smile on his face while he rammed the broomstick in Paul. The officer continued to ram the broomstick inside of Paul for a further five minutes before he finished and said that was a great workout. Paul just laid there on the bed wounded while the officer asked him if it felt good. Paul just ignored the officer as he was in so much pain he couldn't even move. The officer put back on his uniform and then took the handcuffs off Paul. Paul just laid there on the bed crying. He was traumatized but remained silent. He didn't say a word. His booty was all blown out and all the money he had was refunded back to some of the victims. As the officer walked out the door he said Paul I have to say turning you out was a great experience and we have to do it again sometime since you are now my new girlfriend. The officer also said to Paul an officer will come to this cell block three times a day to feed you and that's when Paul turned away from the officer. Paul just laid there thinking about what just happened while looking at the wall. The officer shut the door and walked off laughing to himself. With Paul's cheeks blown out and leaking sticky cream pie he just laid there on the bed thinking. Why did I steal the money? Was it really worth it just to end up going to prison and getting turned out by a prison officer? Paul continued to lay on his bed for the rest of the evening until he fell asleep thinking to himself, I can't believe I just got turned out in prison.